Welcome to Talking Point with Stephen Taylor here on Dean TV. It's good to have you along. And uh, it's an honor and a privilege for me to have a friend, but somebody that I also look up to, somebody that motivated me to, to where I am today. Uh, Bongani and Jolly, brother, man, good to, good to have you here, man. It is so great to be here. It's an absolute honor, man. Thanks for having me. That voice is just, wow, man. <laughs> well, you make me sound, sound so old. It's like, the guy I look up to. Come on, Stephen. <laughs> I grew up listening to you, man. I I remember the good old days of radio when there was good radio to listen to. Yeah, there was good radio. Um, good Up FM. I remember I used to come home from school. Mm. I used to switch on the radio. The first radio show I'd listen to was yours. Yeah. Good Up FM. You did the 12 to 3 show yeah. in the afternoon. And um, I remember like competitions when you used to say, right, we open up the lines. We're taking your calls. And um, I remember going to the library and running. Mm. And they used to have ticket boxes. We never had cell yeah, phones yeah, back in the course, day, yeah. man. I mean, cell phones, um, eh? And... I remember going to the library, putting the money in, trying to get through every day. To that, ah, those are memories, man. Those Lines are memories. Engaged, yeah, that's it. There huge, we go. You know? It mean, was big back yeah, in the day. We had a competition, or maybe just a call-in. You yeah. know, people would be calling like crazy. Nine two one zero nine four nine seven. I still know that. <laughs> remember the number. Dude. Great stuff, man. I know you were a real, 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 real loyal listener. But that's how we became friends yeah. because we got to know each other from going to events. I think yeah. I, I remember seeing you one year at Maynardville Carnival. You were broadcasting yeah, live yeah, there. Yeah. Doing the show from then, the SABC was there with all their yeah, cameras yeah, and yeah. stuff. It was fun. I actually ended up on some promo from that particular. Uh, oh, wow, really? Yeah, <laughs> it was a promo that ran for a long time. I remember yeah. I still got your autograph at that time yeah. because you know I, selfies I, and cell phones were not around then. We used to have this. like those cameras yeah, where exactly. um, the throwaway cameras, yeah. remember? <laughs> yeah, the disposable ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and all, we also used to have those little postcards that we used to have with us. You know, with, right. for each and every yeah. outside broadcast, so yeah. that people can walk away with something. Yeah. You know, I know this guy. There's his picture, maybe his signature and stuff like that you know early days of uh, what we will call commercial radio these yeah, days that's so, mm. so tell us about Bongani and Jolly where you grew up mm. um, living in apartheid South Africa mm. as, as a black man mm. was it tough you know, at first, um, because we were young, we yeah. didn't really get it, you know. Um, and to us, it was um, an everyday occurrence to have um, the, the army basically budging into your house and looking for petrol bombs in your fridge, you know. Um, and then, uh, of course, uh, looking for all the reds under the beds, you know, all that type of stuff. But we didn't get it. But I think by the time I was in my teenage years, when I was about 13 or 14, then you start hearing whispers from people, you know, and people will tell you what you see as normal is definitely not the fact that you as a black person lives in a certain area and white people live in certain areas colored people live in certain areas you know all the different racial groups and you know people started pointing these things out and we started seeing videos for instance you know of uh, ANC conferences in exile we got to see people like Robert Mugabe when he was still someone wh whom we all looked up to yes, you know yeah. uh, he was still the Prime Minister of Zimbabwe at that stage and all those type of things so we used to see people like that and those are the people that our teachers in high school were, were, were using as um, as, as role models for us, yes, you know, yes. and that, um, that you know, you could see, we heard the stories of, of, of African independence, all that type of stuff. So, whilst we were supposed to be studying the history. <laughs> <laughs> you were studying your own history. We were studying our own history. And you were making history. And we were making history. Yeah. You know, so growing up then was all about um, wanting to live in a society where you didn't see the things that you would see happening in your area, for instance. I mean, we didn't know why um, this old man would be running from the, from the, from the for instance, from the you know, they'll be coming back from work. And then, for instance, here in Cape Town, we would be playing during the school holidays at um, maybe at the train station in Lala, yeah. you know. And then we would see this old man sometimes coming out off the, off the train onto the platforms and then running, you know. We wouldn't understand why. To us, it would be funny seeing old people running all over the place. Then we found out that they don't have the dumb bus, you know, so they're running away from the cops because they know the police are waiting for them at a certain point, so they would run the other way. So those are the type of things that we picked up and we were like, hey, something ain't right, you know. And of course, all the taut burnings and the neck lacing and you know, it was hell man you know but we came through it yeah we, did. we came through it and this is where 94 we arrived Nelson Mandela became arrived. president yeah um you know things just how was that came. moment for you and how old were you at that time at that stage I was when Nelson Mandela was uh, was released I was uh, I was 20 that was in 1990 yeah and I was a second year student at the University of Cape Town oh, wow. uh, I had enrolled the year before in 1989 you were allowed to study yeah I was allowed to study oh, okay. there were a few of us you know because at that stage I think you see 
university had about uh, 15,000 students, you know, okay. um, the whole student board. You had to get permission to study there? Or no, 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 not at oh. all. Not at all. It was kind of weird, you know, because you would have, uh, you would have expected these type of things. Yeah. But then when you get there, and there's none of these things, you know, and um, it opened up a whole new world for me. That a was whole new world. Before 1994? It was 1989. Wow. When I first started at UCT, yeah. Wow, I, I finished my trick in 87. I had some problems with my results, uh, my matric results. They had come out that basically, you know, you get the statement with your, with your, with your Result, symbols. Yeah, yeah. Results, yeah. yeah, with the results. And then at the bottom they say, you know, student passes my trick or student fails my trick. I failed one subject in my trick. Wow. <laughs> that was biology. Not even going <laughs> to go there. <laughs> hey, but who likes biology, man? Who likes biology? Unless you're involved in it somehow. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so anyway, um, um, I then, um, I had failed uh, biology, but I passed everything else. I got a couple of distinctions, wow. but the, sta the, the, the statement said I had failed my trick. So I couldn't go anywhere with that particular oh, thing. Wow. So it had to be fixed. It took some time. And um, I think around about May of 19, 1988, I got the confirmation from the department that, look, you had passed my trick. But by that stage, um, you know, it was already too late for me to enroll yeah. anywhere. So I got a little job as a messenger in a company called um, called the Hawkins, Hawkins and Osborne, consulting wow. civil engineers in town. Wow. They were still busy with uh, the construction of the waterfront way back then, you know. The waterfront wasn't around? It wasn't around way back then. <laughs> I used to ride a bike between uh, the company's offices in Bree Street and uh, the Cape Provincial Administration in Chiapini Street in Greenpoint, sure, you know, sure. and then go to the waterfront, you know, take plans there. And uh, yeah, a few years later, boom, we have a waterfront, you know, and we so have a lot of other things as well, yeah, a whole lot of other things. So yeah, in um, in the, that's how I spent my my year after my trick because I couldn't go and study any further. I had to wait up, up until my results were were, were 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 fixed, and then they were fixed. And then same year, I applied for UCT, you know, and I got in. I studied for a BA. Was F. W. Clark president then? He was he was president at that stage. Okay. Yeah, he was president at that stage. I remember in um, in I think it was in eighty nine, early early nineteen ninety, when yeah. he made the speech, you yeah. know, the great speech, yes. and I hadn't I wasn't really listening to the speech because I was busy, you know. I, I was still working for Hawkins, Hawkins and Osborne at that stage and I was out on an errand. And you probably weren't expecting anything. Yeah, I like wasn't expecting. It was the opening of parliament, yeah. yeah, you know. And when I came back, I ran into one of my bosses and he says, you should be happy. And I'm like, about what? <laughs> and he says, yeah, they're unbanning the ANC. Uh, they're unbanning all the organizations and uh, Nelson Mandela is going to be coming out of jail. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, it's on TV, it's on radio, <laughs> you know. And I came into the office and everyone was sitting around not too sure what to expect, you know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, those were the days when there was the uncertainty, people didn't know what was going to happen. But I have to say, even with all the um, problems that we have today, one thing that we can be proud of is how we achieved what we have achieved, you know? Yes. Because with many other countries, especially on our continent, there used to be wars, like high intensity civil wars, you know, coup d'etats, you know, all those type of things. We stayed away it's from that. It's still going on many times. still going on. And we, we moved away from that. We, yeah. we decided to, 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 to have a discussion, you know, mm. for our future. Sometimes and the stuff that people say is hurtful. Yeah. Um, because social media has become very yeah. powerful. Now yeah. people, those persons trying to outdo that person mm. and making a headline and mm. making a statement. Steve Offmeyer. Yeah, well, yeah. no. <laughs> we love you, Steve. Classic example. We love you, Steve. Um, <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's become very hectic because mm. people are now trying to outdo one another and yeah. they've lost track of but what, yeah. what the hell are we trying to say? Exactly. You know, because of all the problems that we have, there's one thing we can be proud of. You know, we achieved our democracy the right way. Yeah, we did. Uh, there might be people right now trying to undermine our democracy, you know. I believe there uh, is. Yeah, there, there's a lot of them. You know, there's a lot of them, and a whole lot of them are in parliament. We know who they are. <laughs> yeah, <we laughs> but that's not the discussion <laughs> right now. <laughs> but yeah, you know, we should be proud of what we are and fight to keep it the way it Absolutely. is, you know. Because right now, that, that's the main thing going forward. And not fight physically, because that's the, that's oh, the yeah. sentiments that we're hearing yeah. at the moment. And fight mm. physically. Mm. No, mm. we don't need another. We, we don't need a civil we war. No, uh, you can hear other political parties saying, you know, we're gonna use, we're gonna do this through the barrel of a gun. Yeah, those are old school no, ways of thinking. Are, you know, we've gone worked. past that. It never works. works. Yeah, it'll never work Nelson even in this Mandela, country. I mean, those ANC leaders for many years mm. try to fight, mm. and it never worked. It never worked. The, you know, the police and army just stood their ground, mm. and you know, they never mm. got anywhere. So but I when guess. when Nelson Mandela sat around the table, yeah. And had peaceful negotiations. That's when he started having dialogue, and that's how we started having a way forward. Exactly. So, I think they exactly. must go back to the history we books. We can't go back to that, you know. We they must go back to the history books. <laughs> they need to go yeah, and learn. Yeah. <laughs> they need to go and learn. But I mean, uh, I, I, I'm proud of who we are, as South Africans. Yeah. You know, I'm proud of this country. I'm very happy. And I mean, I'm a Capetonian. 
born and bred Capetonian and I love the city, you know, and we know the problems that we have as Capetonians too, you know, in relation to integration and all these type of things. And because many people will tell you Capetonians think they live in a different country yeah. than the rest of the country, but, you know, yeah. <laughs> we understand we that. We have our own challenges yeah. though. We understand that and that is one of the big problems in the, in, in the mother city and in the Western Cape. Yes. And it is something we hope to eradicate in the future. You know? But now you grew up in the township, you still live in the township. I, I'm still a township boy. Has anything changed, would you say? A lot has changed, but a lot hasn't. Okay. You know, it's one of those situations whereby you feel things could be better, yeah. you know, especially after all these years. And then you say to yourself, look, uh, I'll be happy with the small mercies. You know, because you, you get the type of feeling that um, w what people want is to wake up every day to have the water running, the yeah. electricity running. You know, you want your, 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 your trash to be taken away. You know, we those take those things. things for granted. Exactly. You know, those are the type of things that people, that people People really worry about yeah. am I gonna have a job to feed my family yeah. all these type of things so you find that after after all these years we, we still have those concerns with a lot of people you know because we still have very high uh, rates of unemployment in the country so it's a problem but things have changed but to an extent. A solution for that because I mean wow. I, I don't believe that any government anywhere let alone mm. in South Africa Africa or the world mm. can eradicate unemployment no, it, it's a mindset that needs to change within mm. people because that's that thing of standing out like this waiting for things is not going to happen it's never going to that happen. mindset of you wanting to go out and make something of your life mm. and be successful the life that you are given mm. that's what you did uh, you know, you, know, you touch on a very you important your own point life there. oh yeah most definitely but i think you also you touch yeah. on a point there where whereby you feel that even if government cannot provide jobs for everybody but one f who hopes that they can assist yeah, they can assist yeah. and you know it is also imperative for government to make to bring about the conditions mm. so that um, uh, private sector, you know, even people um, who can who can who can get se who can set themselves up as employers, you know, and employ themselves and their families. One would feel that those conditions should be in place because we know that government not government is not the only uh, a, a service body or institute, yeah. you know, that can yeah. that can that can uh, create jobs. The private sector can also yeah. play yeah. a role, you and like people the themselves must take responsibility for exactly. themselves. Exactly, because people are trying. You know, I mean, I I, I see especially in my area, uh, I, I see that you know people are. are are recycling now you know because wow. you know it, it actually means having a little bit of something in your pocket if you if you recycle um, people are trying so hard to to, to 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 start little businesses you know everywhere you go I see people who are working who stopped working for instance a friend of mine she she just lost a job uh, a, a few months ago mm -hmm. but she started a little bit of a home uh, home industry you know and she that she, works eh? it works for her you know because she's selling in, in the summer she was selling ice cream and all these type of things now she's selling food just let me know where she is. I'll go visit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's selling food. Um, uh, her boyfriend has just uh, bought some livestock on a little farm and all this type of thing. So they 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 they, they get their own supply of meat, you know. And so she's um, she's uh, she's got you know um, people like taxi drivers in schools. She's got her menus there. People are ordering. And this is a person who could have sat down and and went. Aah! I've lost yeah. my job and be yeah. and be distressed and you yeah. know all the type of but she went out there to do something so I see a whole lot of her. those type of people mm. what is her name can we give her and a shout out faith, faith. <laughs> yeah <That's her> name. <laughs> The name says it all, Bongani. It all. <laughs> you know, she goes out there and she does the thing. And I see a few people like that, especially youngsters, yeah. you know. But then again, also with the youngsters, a whole lot of them like the flesh, you know. They'll see the cars and oh, all yeah, the celebrities. The the yeah, flesh. all the celebrities. And they think, you know, that's where everybody wants but to we be. we should aspire to be great, to oh, yeah. be better. Oh, yeah. That I but like to be a celeb. No, who, wants no. to, who wants to aspire to be a celeb? <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're seeing, Stephen, is it? I mean, uh, we are in the media industry. Yeah. But I wouldn't, but we, people might think of us as celebs, but I mean, mm. we're not. I mean, yeah. we're just normal people doing what we love, trying to make a difference. Trying to make a difference. That's what it's all about. So, Mangani, we'll get to your amazing career mm. in a moment. I just want to touch on something. Living in the township, mm. we hear about the city of Cape Town, DA run um, city of Cape Town, best run mm. municipality in the mm. country. Mm -hmm. You live in the township. Yeah. Tell us about, do you think that the city has forgotten you? Oh, on a lot of occasions, yeah. You know, uh, you feel that sometimes there's just no communication how things are done, you know. And you feel that if uh, you, for instance, <laughs> one of my big problems, like if I can tell you just as a personal yeah. thing, you know, is my, 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 my rates, for instance, at my house, oh, yes, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to deal with that. I've been to the city council so many times to try and find out why this one month I'll be paying 700 bucks and then the next month I'm paying 1.4. Wow. 
double the amount, you know, and there's no explanation. You go to the city council and you sit there and you get into offices with these people and they explain things to you and they will tell you, no, 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 we're going to fix this, we're going to fix that. And then the next thing you know, your, 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 uh, your, your right. statement yeah. comes in yeah. again and it's just gone up again. So, you know, there are all those type of things and you see other little things like um, potholes, you know, yes. um, burst water pipes. So you, you live know. in a township, you have your own house. I have my you own don't house. live in an informal settlement. No, 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 I have my okay. own house. Yeah, I have my okay. own house. And uh, you find that, you know, there are all those little things uh, why sometimes the, uh, the the, the refuse the refuse is yeah. not being taken away yeah. you know uh, and I live there's a park in front of my house in Langa and it's a park that's used by a lot of people so sometimes um, there, there are not enough um, uh, garbage bags or garbage bins for instance because when people relax there sometimes they leave there and you know that is also yes. entirely on the yes. people who use yes. the, the, the facility but a whole lot of them will leave their rubbish lying around there and then it blows up against my fence and it's stuck there when I rock home and I open up my gate and it all just floods into my yard <laughs> <laughs> and it's really annoying, That's you know, and then the city council guys will come and, f and, and clean the whole place up, but they're not clean in front of my house, you know, yeah. and I go, what about this? And they're like, that's not our job, sure. you know, and so when you try to find out from the city council as to how you approach these type mm. of things, then, then you don't get the, the response. You know who your local councillor is? I know who my local councillor is, although I've never really seen him. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I can tell you one thing, the, 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 the governing party's uh, constituency office is just across the road from me, oh, you know. Wow. I've never seen our MP. Oh, wow. uh, I, I always see the, the nice 4x4s and, the, and the, the nice SUVs and the nice German cars always yeah. parked there when there's something that's uh, apparently exclusive to them, you know. But then that's the nature of our democracy these days, yeah. you know. Our, our elected representatives are kind of like on a pedestal and they're kind of like looking down on us. Uh, and these are the people who come exactly from where we are at but the don't moment. You think, you know? But don't you think it's important? for you to find out who these people are if you're electing oh, yeah. them oh yeah you know they're oh, not yeah. gonna come they can't physically go to everybody yeah it's up to us to yeah. I mean information is accessible yeah. mm -hmm. if you know who your MP is or your mm -hmm. councillor you can find their cell phone yeah. number or the email address yeah. on the internet it's exactly. easy exactly. access the information but is you'd there. like to see them around at some stage no, no, you know sure. you'd like to you'd like to say uh, you'd like to go to a meeting maybe a street committee meeting and find that your councillor is there mm -hmm. you know um, but sometimes you go to this to these street committee meetings and and um, people will be like, no, we're going to bring one of the councillors around, even if it's not from your particular yeah. ward, but yeah. someone who can come and explain certain things because they're part of the city council. Yes. Uh, nah, <laughs> it just doesn't, it happen. doesn't happen. So I think, yeah, I think there is a little bit of taking the public for granted. Um, there's also a little bit of the public being a little bit um, yeah. also laid back when yeah. it comes to this type of things, you know. And I guess people are getting a little bit tired. And uh, I think, honestly, after all these years, I think we're getting into politics as usual now in South Africa. Okay, let's change focus, Mongani. You were on Good Up FM. Mm. Um, did you ever get to meet Nelson Mandela or FW Clark or anything like that? I, I did get to meet Nelson Mandela once. Oh, wow. uh, yeah, he came in for an interview with uh, one of our former DJs on the station yes. who was a breakfast DJ, J. Mark Gilman. Oh, yeah. One of my favorite people oh, wow. in the world. One of my most favorite people that, in the world. Uh, he was a legend. Oh, yeah, I love the guy. Kind of a weird guy, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I love the guy. Together with Graham White yes, and, and yes. Dimitri Jagels yes. and Clarence Ford. You know, yeah, yeah, I used to worship the crown those guys <laughs> float, uh, floated upon. Honestly, you know, I learned a lot from those guys. And um, yeah, so he came in for an interview. Uh, I had heard that he was going to be in for the interview because there was a whole um, yeah, um, thing and yeah. And also, we ran quite a nice campaign, you know, to inform the people oh, that nice. he's going to. So there were promos and all this type oh, of nice. stuff. So and I was doing the graveyard slot at that stage, you know, oh, two wow. to six in the morning, okay. and he was going to be coming in at eight o'clock. Oh, so you had to wait. I waited. <laughs> <laughs> I waited was together. Was president then? Yeah, he was president oh, then. Yeah, that was in '95, I think. '96. Sure. Was there a lot of security? Whoa, they came in with all the stuff, you know, all the movie stuff, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and they came in. and so they you got to meet him? I got to meet him. I actually, I was there with uh, Bad Boy T. Oh, Thomas. Yes. Yeah, Thomas, yeah, yeah, who's now I think on Five FM, yeah, yeah. and he also just decided to come in <laughs> and stick around because he uh, wanted to meet the wouldn't. president. Who wouldn't? And then a uh, funny story is that Thomas came in with. Uh, with a puppy, you yeah. know. He came in during my show and he stayed with me throughout the show. And he came in with his puppy. And, um, you know, so, so later on, when the presidential, you know, guys, security guys come in and they, you know, they cleared the whole place. And then later on, we saw uh, his, uh, his, uh, his uh, I think his PA, Zelda. Yes. Yes. Zelda came through. And uh, then we saw the president going past the window and he came into the studio. And uh, then Mark, of course, introduced himself to him and blah. 
blah, 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 blah. So then the president then went, uh, oh, by the way, so what's his name? And then Bad Boy T jumped up and said, my name is Thomas Dada. And the president was like, no, I'm asking about the dog. <laughs> Bad boy T couldn't live that down for a few months, you know, <laughs> because Gilman just kept on bringing it up all the time. <laughs> What's his name? I'm Thomas Dutton. No, we're talking about the dog. <laughs> uh, and yeah, you, got to, you got to speak to him? Yeah, I just got to, to, to shake his yeah. hand, you know. I've seen him a few times, especially when it came to, to, to the campaigns, the, you know, oh, to the yeah, uh, yeah. election campaigns. He would come to Langa. Uh, a friend of mine actually held an, um, an umbrella for him, you oh, know. Wow. Yeah, so he's like, ah! Yeah, one of my friends was actually um, works in the police. Was actually a bodyguard. It was a bodyguard um, for him on the estate where mm. he lived in Cape Town. Apparently, mm. he ran every morning. Yeah, yeah. Um, I read the book by Rory. You know, yeah. a step behind Mandela. Interesting book. Uh, it gives you an insight into the men's. But you know, funny thing, Mandela Mandela, mm. chief um, now of the Mandela family. Yeah, the grandson. I saw him the other day running in Cape Town as well. Is it? And I was like, so Cape Town is no bodyguards, mm. no nothing, just running. And I was like, dude, come on. So I still phone him. I'm like, Mandela, is this you, my brother? He's like, yes, this is yeah. me. I'm like, but that, that, that falling in his fall, mm. in his um, grandfather's footsteps, I and, believe. And then you'll find the ones who don't really care about running around with bodyguards anyway. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. th that's one of the things I can't really understand in this country sometimes is, uh, I mean, I, 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 having worked for ETV, yeah. um, on occasion I had seen politicians coming in for interviews, yeah. you know, especially Cape Town politicians. I've seen uh, the Premier, when she was mm. still the Mayor, coming in for an interview, driving in a nice uh, Mercedes-Benz C180 yes. or C200 or something Did she like have that. a blue light? Escort? No, she didn't. <laughs> she came in. She came in. <laughs> she came in. Most probably with one bodyguard and a driver. You know, that's the thing. You know, and I was like, wow. So, so the mayor of Cape Town is driving around in a C200. Yeah, but they knew where they were going. You know, yeah. and I found that impressive because a few years later, after she had moved on to being premier, yeah. I saw the mayor of Cape Town, Miss Delil, coming in with the same car. Oh, you wow. know, yeah, you know, it's that that impressive. belongs to the city of Cape Town. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was like impressive. Yeah. Uh, and then you go to these little towns in the Karoo and other places of the country and you find that the mayor's got a Q7 and a this and a that and it gets changed every yeah. year, you know. Yeah. But whereas a mayor of a huge metropole like Cape Town can drive around in a C-class. And these are the things that many politicians don't get, you know, winning hearts and minds is a very good thing. Even when Norma India Mofuketo was mayor of Cape Town, uh -huh. she came to an event of mine and she drove in like an old BMW Okay. at that time. Okay, and she came time. in, no blue lights, no mm. anything. Obviously they had the, 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 the people around her, mm. but it was... It was, it was nice. You'll find now that the mayor of a place called like Dwehatfontein somewhere, yeah. you know, <laughs> driving around in the biggest SUV. And it's like three of them, you know. And uh, the, the town itself has got but about 500 when, people. Once again, it comes down to people <laughs> holding their people accountable, which they don't. Mm. These are the things that you find so funny about this yeah. country at the moment, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, some of them, we, we will find them in a funny haha -ha way, and some of them will find them in a funny... So the voice of ETV, Bongani and Jolly, we know we have, I've been letting people hear your voice now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they're probably thinking, where do we know this voice? Yeah. The voice of ETV. Um, does, that's stuck with you now because people know, like when you speak to people, they're like, oh, that voice. Mm. Is, that, is that a big thing for you? Well, it has helped me in the past a few times. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not going to mention some of the uh, uh, illegal scraps that yeah, this has yeah. gotten me out of, yeah. you know, because people are going to go, oh, he does that? No. <laughs> so I'm not going to mention that. You're allowed to do it. <laughs> ah, well, you know, getting out of fines and stuff like that, it has helped me a few times. But are you allowed to do it here? Are you allowed to say something like, oh, yeah, I'm sure I'm allowed to say something. Okay. You know, I'm allowed to say something. Yeah, we go out on OVHD, which is mm. part of ETV. Which so, part of the family. Yeah. tell us about how to do that thing, man. Tonight on E, <laughs> do it, do it, brother. Come on. I mean, we, one, of my, one of my favorite, one of the um, f favorite of many people yeah. is uh, uh, the Friday, Friday Action yeah, Night. Tell one, us that. You know? yeah, yeah. Um, don't go down without a fight. It's Friday Action Night. Oh! <laughs> Just one of the ones that we love. <laughs> yeah, I'm part of the furniture at ETV now. I mean, I've been there now since um, 2000, you know, so it's been a long time. Do you enjoy it? I'm enjoying it, you know. It's um, for a lazy guy like me. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, eh? It's, it's, it's enough work, you know? Uh, yeah, I've been, I've been doing it for a while because, I mean, I, I actually was first approached in 97 after the station had gone on air. And um, they didn't like my uh, delivery at that stage. They were like, nah, you sound too much like a DJ, which I was. But you are. Yeah. But you still are. I still am. Yeah, so they were like, nah, 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 nah. So I came in for audition, didn't really get the job. And then three years later, I got a call from a colleague of mine. Her name is Bronya Hirschman. 
Uh, she, she used to own a studio in town and she also used to do voiceovers, all these type of things. Mm -hmm. And I had worked with her before on a couple of projects. And then she called me up and told me, listen, ETV is looking for a new voiceover artist and I put your name forward. Um, would you like to go and talk to them? You know, I was like, oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> so I went in and, um, um, and I thought I was doing an audition. Mm -hmm. They just gave me a script and they said, read this, read this this way, read this this way. And I did like three scripts and sure. I thought it was an audition. Sure. And then they said to me, sign here, we will call you next time, you know? Wow. And then they called me the following day, I was like, is this a regular thing? And they're like, man, you are the new voice. And wow. basically that's how it went, you know? Sure. And uh, so I've been there now, yeah, since 2000. And it's been great, I enjoyed it, you know? I'm still enjoying it. And you're still doing radio, of course, uh, Magic? Yeah, I'm back with Magic, 8 to 8 a.m., yeah. great radio station, I love the music, you know? It speaks to me because uh, it's, uh, it's all hit radio, mm. it's all hit music, it's all the music you know from back in the day, um, especially people People like me who come from an era when radio wasn't as segregated as yes. it is today you know yes. because growing up since we didn't have TV and all these type of things in the 70s uh, radio was the main thing that's it and I used to listen to what is now today known as you oh, know yeah. they were then at that stage known as Radio Bantu and then they yeah. became Radio Corsa so but if you listen to that radio station you would hear Donna Summer followed by the Beatles, followed by Earth, Wind and Fire, you know, that type of stuff, followed by Cooler the Gang. My friend is there, Nonala Tose, she does a show at Tunklobo Enene. Tunklobo Enene, yeah. You see, so, I mean, I, I grew up in that era when uh, you, you, you could switch over and listen to Radio 5 and yes. you still hear the same music, yes. you know, all that type of stuff. And um, so I got to know a lot of music, Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons, you name them. Oh, I grew yeah, up with that stuff, good, you know, Creedence Clearwater Revival. I and grew now up you're with playing that. it. And I'm playing it. <laughs> and I'm saying to myself, this is, you never hear this music anymore, yeah. you know, you hear it in the movies yeah. radio stations all are going for the young market now That's so right. everything is hip-hop and everything is house and R&B so I've got nothing wrong with it. Are you a Madala now? I'm a Madala now <laughs> I, 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 which is why I decided to have this interview with my cap on I didn't want people to see all the great. <laughs> I don't want to hide the face, man, because it's about the boys, brother. <laughs> so you, you I'm only joking. That. You get that. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I'm loving everything about it. You know, all the DJs uh, on the station are people who are proven in radio. Yeah. They're, not, they're not out there to prove themselves because that's another thing with a young set. It's always trying to be, uh, to prove that I'm better than so-and-so, which is why we see all these Twitter wars uh, yeah. amongst people who work for the same organization, yeah. same radio station. Yeah. And I go. When I was still like uh, on, 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 on new to radio and yeah. still young in the 90s, you know, even if I had a colleague that I hated, I would never make that public, you know? It would be something that everybody within the organization, I'm part of a team. You, 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 you want to show a united front, exactly. Yeah. You know, the, the brand always has to, 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 to project, you know, a positivity yeah. and strength, you know? But these days, uh, everybody's got their Twitter followers. I want yeah. 400,000, so I'm gonna diss so and so, and then That's so and so it. is gonna diss yeah. back. And these people all work for the same organization. And I'm saying, you know, I'm happy I'm not part of this, yeah. you know, because I could have said something stupid myself, yeah. especially if I was that age at this time, because yeah. I used to say stupid things when I was a little bit younger, but we didn't have Twitter. You know? We didn't have Facebook those days. So whatever. Are you on Twitter? Thing. Can people follow you? Yeah, I am on Twitter. What is your? Uh, it's just at Bean Jolly. Bean Jolly. Bean Jolly, yeah. But I don't have Facebook and all that. Other man, you know what? We can sit here all day and chat. We must. We'll have to get you back again because. Oh yeah. We just it, time goes so quickly, time man. Time goes just, very quickly, it man. It was just amazing, man. It was so good having you on my show and so good um, seeing you again, man. Mm -hmm. I know. Ha happy, happy to see that you're doing well and. Uh, um, I'll definitely be listening to your show on Magic. Yeah. yeah. Um, so great, brother. Well, Ghani and Jolly, well. thank you, man. And we support the same team, yeah. Arsenal. Ah, <laughs> Ghana for life, eh? We, we are like what, man? We hate Wenger today, we love him tomorrow. Yeah. We hate him next week, we love him yeah. next the week after yeah. that. It, it, what makes it nice being an Arsenal fan, I guess? <laughs> That's the only thing I can take out of it, you know? Winning an occasional That's FA Cup. Good players. Ozil is brilliant. We've just That's bought a new player. I don't, mm, know. I I don't want to swear, but I think it's Gaka or yeah, Kaka. Uh, 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 Granit like Shaka. Yeah, Granit you Shaka. Oh, yeah. you said better. Yeah, yeah, I've seen him a few times, you know, especially. He was playing for what? Uh, uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach, I that's think, it, yeah. Yeah, it. I've seen him a, a few times, Europa League and, and in, the, in, the, in the Champions League. Uh, whenever, you know, I, Arsenal is not playing yeah, and yeah. there's one of these games and then I can watch. I've seen him. So hopefully next season we might get another striker to help out, you know, uh, Giroud. Can you do me a favor? Mm. Can you say... Um, this is Talking Point with Stephen Taylor. Can you do that? I can do that. Okay, go ahead, bud. This is Talking Point with Stephen Taylor on Dean TV. Ah, there we go. <laughs> the legend, Bangani and Jolly. 
<laughs> Father man, thank you, my friend. Thank it's you. It's been an absolute again. pleasure, bro. I've really enjoyed it. I like to talk, so. Yeah, we will. Yeah. We will. We'll get you back, man. We'll get you back. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Thanks. It's talking point with Stephen Taylor here on Dean TV. Thank you very much to the legend, uh, Bogani and Jolly, for hanging out. Of course, interact with us on the show at Stephen Taylor SA is where you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Stephen Taylor SA. And of course, check out the Facebook page, just uh, facebook.com forward slash talking point. I'll see you next time, same time. Or same time, same place, next time. One guy can do it better. Anyway, have a good one. Bye-bye. <laughs>